Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. As usual, we'll start off with a nice cheers. Hold on, hold on, I gotta open mine up. You're not gonna wait for me? Jeez. I don't know, I'm feeling it. It's later in the day, Friday, I'm trying to relax. Cheers. So, let's see, what's happened in the past week in crypto? We'll do a quick wrap up for you guys and tell you some big points that happened from consensus to Aaron selling his expanse. Yeah, I'm finally um, out. It feels good. There's a lot of trepidation and uncertainty. Is it going to pump? Is it not going to pump? But I'm out. Yeah, Expanse was a hold we had a while ago, and you know some of the team has been split up, so we decided to sell out of that project. But we still wish him the best. And everyone holding, good luck. Yeah, the real hang-up I was having was that you know we trade to maximize our Bitcoin profits. That's our goal. And with the new U.S. tax rules... Even though I was down by Bitcoin because overall the market had pumped relative to US dollars so hard since we got into Expanse, I sold down and I'm still going to owe a butt ton of tax on that. So it's just not the yeah. greatest situation to be to in. Clarify, to but, clarify all of that, you know, when Bitcoin pumped from the 2000, 1000 range to the 20,000 and then is hitting this floor at 8,000, the amount of the price per coin for expense is up in US dollar, even though it's down in Satoshi compared to Bitcoin. Right. So Aaron sold for a loss in Bitcoin when he's trying to trade to gain Bitcoin, but he still has to owe taxes because it was up in US dollar, which is pretty, pretty silly. Yeah. yeah they'll have to, they'll, but, they'll, they'll you redo, know, redo it, was, it was time to get out of it. You have to know when to cut losses and when, you know, a project just isn't working and we haven't seen anything from expense in a while. Um, so it was time to, redeploy those those assets makes sense so a couple of things that happened in the past week there was some big stuff there was obviously consensus yeah, there was consensus in new york city which is you know the largest blockchain event in the world one of the largest uh, i know there's a big one in singapore coming up too um i think but consensus had over eight thousand guests arrive i believe they had over like 17 million in ticket sales or something wow so definitely a big event um, but despite the event happening, the price, uh, the overall, not just a Bitcoin, but the cryptocurrency market as a whole has definitely decreased and the market value has decreased. And a lot of people are wondering why. Um, yeah, it's interesting. So what, why would that happen? We had this huge conference, uh, you know, all around crypto. Why is the market down? I mean, we've definitely heard from a few, you know, colleagues and friends who attended that. It wasn't as good as it has been in past years. It was very crowded and packed, and the the overall environment was you know different as more you know there was a shift for you know now traditional Wall Street is yeah, into, yeah yeah or the, is interested. There's far less enthusiasts and far more like business people opportunists yeah, yeah opportunists. So I could see that you know affecting the overall event, and I I guess there hasn't been like too much crazy news to come out of it, honestly. Like we have no, and also sometimes news is sluggish. You know, maybe uh, it's going to take a week or two for to catch up and gain momentum. Uh, it's very possible that a lot of people showed up and wants to want to buy bitcoins now, but just haven't yet. Yeah, um, there's there's definitely news coming out. It's just that what I was saying is that there's not like that huge you yeah. know event that thing that you know people may have been expecting. That, you yeah, know, could have pumped you know the market immediately. There's also speculation that a big reason to the last pump was because some major family offices, such as the Soros family, got involved, which actually caused that price to increase. You're saying relative to last year's consensus? Yeah. Interesting. That's and that's a big reason for the pump in December in general. Some family offices got involved, whereas hedge funds are still going to be a little bit more delayed because it's it's the re the regulations around family offices and hedge funds and the bureaucracy behind it is a little less formal in the family office world. It's a little more. They can take different types of risks. Yeah. Um, but overall, I did hear consensus was still it's still a positive thing, right? So some some funny things that happened was uh, a bunch of Lambos were parked outside the event. Yeah, actually, you no, know the guy, right? Yeah. So they were who contracted them? Was it Bitme? Some rental company. But who um, who brought them in? I thought we we heard who brought them in. But yeah, there's a, a local exotic car rental company that was contacted by. One of the organizations, you know, in crypto that was at the event, uh, to bring out three Lambos and park them outside the, you know, New York Midtown Hilton where consensus happens. <clears throat> and reading in that article, I actually happened to know the owner of that uh, exotic car rental company. 
Yeah, it's pretty funny. Small it's world. a good marketing gimmick. Yeah, and, it's great. Uh, I mean, I would I when I heard about it, I thought that, you know, consensus did it. You know, it would have been a great, you know, move <laughs> on their part. Uh, or even that like Lamborghini Manhattan decided like, oh, they heard about this Bitcoin yeah. you know, event. We're gonna park some cars outside. Uh, but no, it was actually And even in the past, Lamborghini has said quotes like as people make money in crypto, when people make money with crypto, they buy Lambos. <laughs> They're trying to really make that a thing. Yeah, I mean... It is a thing. Yeah, it um, definitely is a thing. Uh, what else happened? Vitalik Buterin, the Ethereum god, did not show up at the event. He boycotted because one reason, I'm sure of many, though, is he claims that he feels the ticket prices were too high and uh, it's crypto as a whole is no longer becoming a proper entry barrier for people to enter markets that they normally can't. Yeah. So I think that I, I generally I agree with what he's saying. You know, it was very expensive. We considered going, uh, but you know, almost $2,000 a ticket. It's hard to justify that cost. Um, you know, and honestly, having heard the feedback from this year, I'm not, I'm not too upset that we didn't go, but yeah, crypto will definitely become, you know, price is going to get higher, you know, owning a whole Ethereum you know, may be a lofty goal one day, yeah. but the whole point, you know, of crypto, I think still remains where, you know, you can break it down and the barrier of entry is still, you know, people can still get involved for a relatively low price point. Yeah. Um, Ripple had an after party and Snoop Dogg got high with them and, uh, you know, smoked uh, marijuana and people were saying that they can smell it like halfway down the block of wherever the party was from. That's Snoop in Manhattan. Dogg. So yeah, I'm glad Snoop can, uh, Bring everyone together. That's what he does. He brings people together and they connect on all new levels. Um, what else? What else? Coinbase is pushing more and more to go institutional as we're seeing. Uh, they're creating custodi custodial products, which is a fancy term for saying we will safely hold your assets for you and you don't have to worry about it and it's insured, etc. Well, we've talked about it, like yeah. this. like Custody is a huge issue. Um, you know, Safely storing your crypto assets... Um, when you're not a technologist or a, you know enthusiast who's going to spend hours figuring it out, um, is a challenge. Especially when you're looking at it as an investment, you know security is paramount. So these kinds of services that are going to support institutional guys getting in and the bigger fish, um, family offices, make them comfortable with putting their U.S. dollar into crypto, or, or you know their money into crypto, I think is like really critical to overall market adoption. No, absolutely. I'm curious to see how they progress. And, yeah. uh, you know, as the infrastructure, even outside of Coinbase, grows around the institutional side and the operational headaches decrease, should result in an increased price on liquidity. <laughs> so, um, AKA Moon. Speaking of regulatory headaches, we just learned that Genesis, the Winklevoss Twins Exchange. No, um, that's Gemini. Oh, Gemini, I'm sorry. Genesis Global Trading. Yeah. Separate, yeah, yeah. They're a high net worth uh, yes. liquidity. They're not an exchange, but they're kind of like a dark pool-ish. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they just got the fifth ever New York Bit license. Um, and in learning about this, uh, I found out a little bit more that Circle Ripple 2, which is a subsidiary of Ripple that sells Ripple, uh, and Coinbase and Bitflyer are the only four that had previously been issued New York Bit license. So even Gemini doesn't actually have a New York Bit license, which is super interesting because that's where they're based. Um, so digging into that, I found out that Gemini has a trust charter uh, from the New York State Department of Financial Services, which allows it to operate as a crypto exchange. And I think that Genesis was in a similar boat prior to this. Uh, they were operating in some, because they were operating in New York prior to getting the license, and I think they were operating in some kind of legal gray area or uh, temporary state that allowed them to exist and run, uh, but they weren't, like, fully approved. Yeah. So now I've got that. That's cool. Um, definitely a lot of... Screw the bit license, dude. Yeah, Honestly, yeah. It was a bit, such a big headache. Um, there's a lot of exchanges that aren't registered in New York because... And, you know, the bit license is obviously just a uh, license for uh, virtual currency activities and allows you to process payments and exchange uh, the assets. But it doesn't just hurt the companies that want to open up in New York. It also hurts the people of New York. Yeah. <laughs> the residents are not allowed to yeah. invest in this like, great asset. It's pretty ridiculous on the state. You know, they've had this bit license for three years and they've only issued five of them. 
Yeah, and I it's, believe it's expensive. I believe it's over like fifty grand in total. I'm sure. Really I'm get sure. Everything together to get everything together and you know fees and bullshit. Yeah. Um But to only have issued five in three years is kind of like ridiculous. What are you doing? Um, I feel like. Yeah, there was and then by that standard, it's clear there's fraud everywhere. You know, there's everyone in New York <laughs> using yeah. these exchanges. Yeah, I was reading that the CEOs of Shapeshift and Kraken were uh, on stage at Consensus this week, uh, complaining about the bit license. And yeah, it's forced yeah, both. Not regulated of, it's forced and... both of their companies out of New York State, and it's just been like a huge hassle. And they were saying that it's not the right, you know, regulation. We definitely need regulation, but it's not the right kind of regulation. I think they were pointing to. Japan has a digital currency uh, laws or something they recently enacted, and they were saying that that's, I'm not super familiar with them, but they were saying that that's more along the lines of what we need to be trending towards hmm. and how, how Japan is kind of approaching the, the issue. Yeah, the government definitely needs to uh, sort things out from a legal standpoint and the tax standpoint, which is very annoying. Um, but the one thing they are aware of is the scams. <laughs> We saw that the SEC released a uh, fake ICO website called Howie Coins, HowieCoins.com, and it's a fake ICO website. When it, if you try to click on their Twitter, like if you scroll to the bottom and try to click on a Twitter link or something, it just brings you right to the SEC website and says basically like, be careful about crypto. And it's definitely um, swaying, persuading people not to invest in crypto, <laughs> but uh, it's interesting. Yeah, I was expecting to see Ryan Gosling on the team somewhere, <laughs> but their team designer. does look pretty shady. I, I can say that you know this is not a this is not a coin I'd invest in. But they actually did a pretty bad job. Pretty bad job. They did a pretty bad job. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't look like a fake ICO site at all. It no, looks no, like no. a worse than the yeah, the, yeah. the scam ICO websites do a much better they job. They do. Yeah, this. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's basically what I'd expect from name of the game an SEC, <laughs> you know, dummy website. Yeah. Um, Circle's been getting some attention just because, you know, people, ever since they bought, purchased Poloniex, their valuation has been gaining more and more discussion. They're now officially a unicorn. Yeah, they raised $110 million this week. Or they closed $110 million this week at a $3 billion valuation. And that was led by Bitmain. Oh, so there's gosh. a bunch of other venture capital firms that were involved in the round, but Bitmain was the main uh, source of funding there. And that's super interesting because Circle followed this up by announcing that they plan to release a U.S. dollar coin, uh, cryptocurrency backed by U.S. dollar. Like another USDT, yeah. Yeah, so it's directly competing with Tether, but their goal is to, you know, make it far more robust. And I was reading that they have a new governance system that they are hoping will, you know, alleviate a lot of the issues that Tether is experiencing um but it's what's really interesting there is that you have this you have bitmain which is a chinese entity investing heavily in a company that is now going to be releasing cryptocurrency backed by a u.s dollar yeah so there's definitely some you know politics involved there as well i think um it's not I so guess. yeah i think yeah i think there's definitely a political aspect to that you know bitmain having that kind of involvement but I don't exactly know what the. I don't know. I think it makes sense. I mean, they're Chinese. Com- they're Chinese, but you know, they're huge in crypto, so it makes sense that they're enthusiastic about it. Um, I wouldn't say they're investing one hundred and ten million dollars into the coin. They're investing. No, no, not at all. Yeah, in the company. Not at all. But yeah. it's just it's interesting. It's still an interesting, uh, you know, relation there. Yeah. Um. What else is there? Oh, Bitfinex now. Who last, you know, they're getting tighter on regulations. Bitfinex is probably one of the most sophisticated exchanges out there. They offer the most margin liquidity of any exchange. And um, they have uh, big players on there. About a year ago, or a little less than a year ago, they started booting U.S. residents off, which is annoying. And then also recently now, they're requesting users to send them tax information explicitly. Yeah. Um, And uh, a lot of people are very frustrated by that, which I don't quite understand. (laughs) I mean, I get the whole purist thing. But people are saying, oh, this takes away the point of crypto. It's like, no, not in my opinion. In my opinion, it takes away the point of crypto if you have to release information to your wallets on your yeah, personal yeah. computer and peer-to-peer lending. But if you're trading on a website to make money, 
you're making money and that's your income and there's going to yeah. be some regulation yeah, around absolutely. that. absolutely. But once you want to go private, you could still go private with crypto. Yeah. You can still convert it, bring it to a desktop wallet, and it's not very easy to track. Regulation, you know, as we've said, is definitely necessary. The purists will never like it. Um, and I, I think it's it's going to become more and more clear that true purists, like the real hardcore purists, they're not really into mainstream adoption. That's not yeah. that's not their their goal. They like crypto was, you know, three years ago, the Wild West, you know, with just you know, craziness going on with no regulation, no rules, no nothing. Um, and then I think we'll see a lot of the purists, you know, come to the realization that, you know, this is all necessary and, you know, for the greater good, if your goal is for crypto to, you know, replace traditional finance. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's going to have to be a bridge somewhere. Um, so yeah, I don't know, the purists need to get their shit together. But yeah, we, we definitely saw, you know, firsthand how much of a pain it was when Bitfinex cut off U.S., yeah. uh, you know, support, you know, we could no longer uh, support the trade Gnostics Bifinex integration. So we had to remove that from the product. Um, and that's something we want to add back in. Yeah, we'll get that back. I mean, the bigger issue is just like, it's really annoying that um, we're that scary, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. Because they are a huge exchange. It would be great to be able to trade on there for sure. So I don't know. Um... Gemini added Zcash. Oh, yeah. Gemini added Zcash. So that's pretty cool. I'm pretty surprised that they were even allowed to add a privacy-centric coin like that. Yeah, I didn't actually know this, but that addition of that particular coin had to be reviewed by the New York State Department of Financial Services, mm -hmm. um, which is, is definitely interesting. So they gave the sign-off for that. And good job to those Zcash holders because despite the crypto market making a pullback... <laughs> Zcash went up like 50% yeah. from that listing. Really, really nice pump. Yeah, so that's cool. Yeah. I think that's a good quick wrap-up yeah. of this past week's news. Yeah, shorter um, episode, but uh, that but was a to good the summary. Point. Yeah, no, so definitely, you know, consensus. The price is back, but I think that I'm still optimistic it'll go up. It's just lagged right now. Yeah, yeah. Sluggish. You know, I, historically, we're not even close to a long bear market. <laughs> no, so, yeah. Um, we could still be in this for a minute yeah, or absolutely. two. Um, and yeah, you know, so thanks for watching, you know, for another episode, we might try to do something, uh, a bit more direct, like our older videos as well. So if you have any topics you want us to talk about, or if you have any questions and want clarity, let us know. And uh, we're more than happy to talk about that. Yeah. Sounds good. Thanks guys.